Welcome to Sew and Tell, where sewists from fashion, theater, and indie sewing bring their different perspectives to the hottest topics in the sewing community. I'm Amanda Carestio. I'm Kate Zeinard. And I'm Meg Healy. Today on the podcast, we're talking so frosting. There's always a good reason to make something special in a special fabric too. Then after that, we'll share each inspiration in our Sojo segment, and then we'll ask you to share something too. But before we begin, how's everyone doing? Get me in the holiday spirit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying. I'm doing my best. Um, yeah. I, I've been I've been front loading all of my holiday stuff because you know I'm going into surgery in a few days. So I mean I'll have already done it by the time this episode drops. But um, so I've been wrapping presents and buying presents, and the tree is up, and so I I keep trying, but I still feel like it's so far in the future. I don't know. How about you guys? Yeah. It's happening super slowly for me. Like, I'm a little bit better Mm -hmm. than I was the last time we recorded, but I'm not full throttle, like, eggnog Christmas music yet. Um, But I do, I haven't wrapped any presents yet. And I think maybe once I do that, it'll kind of um, pick things off for me more. I also, I think I'm finally ready to start sewing some presents. I feel like it's super late. (laughs) But... um, (laughs) But I have some I have some pretty easy um, gifties lined up for my family. Mm. So I think I'm I think once that starts, once that all starts to happen, I think I think I'll get in the spirit a bit more. Mm hmm. Yeah, we've uh, we're getting a real tree this year, so we're picking that Ooh, out this fun. weekend. And because I haven't gotten out my ornaments in so long, because it's really this week, it's kind of sunk in that we won't be able to go visit any family for yeah. uh, for Christmas. Like, um, like even from Toronto to let, like, it's just, we're in like lockdown. And so it's kind of just now sinking, you know, you're always like, oh, in a couple of weeks, it'll be different. And then yeah. it just, it's like, I don't think I'm going to be going anywhere. So it's kind of not like, I've never spent a holiday with just, you know, the bunny and Julian and I in our, in our law. And so I, I am kind of excited about that. Just kind of, you know, hunkering down, maybe I'll try and, you know, make dinner and stuff. So it's kind of exciting for me. It's like a new, like, it's kind of, I I get excitement with things new. And then, Mm -hmm. you know, we'll have Zoom dinner or something. So it's kind of sinking in for that reality for me. And I'm not like, I don't know. It's just, I just need to embrace, I just need to try and get excited about what's different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So um, I think the real tree will will help. We've had a fake one the past couple of years and any bunny that we've had, absolutely is obsessed with the real tree. It's like, they smell, they're like, I should know this smell. It's like, (laughs) and they always sleep under the tree. So um, I don't know, but Bubbly's, I don't know if he's ever been around like a real tree inside. So I'm excited to see, see him with that. But yeah, eggnog right now is about the most festive (laughs) I've gotten (laughs) so far, but definitely next week I'll, I'll be, I'll be getting into it. So yeah. Well, shall we jump into some so frosting? Yeah. I mean, stuff? yeah. I need to talk about what I'm going to wear just by myself at Christmas. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. I'm fancy. <laughs> exactly. Well, first up, um, I wanted to talk so frosting patterns, and I think Meg, you're totally right. This year, mm-hmm. holiday party yeah. plans are looking a lot different. Mm-hmm. But I kind of feel like even more reason to get a little festive. You know, whether that's your ideal so frosting scenario or maybe it's something that you're kind of adjusting for this year's reality um i think there's lots of ways to go about it um so kind of first getting us started i was curious what is your general approach to so frosting um and i i guess we should start with kind of defining so frosting um i i think that um basics are usually like your wardrobe pieces, t-shirts, yeah. jeans. Those are the cake. The cake. And <laughs> the frosting is more like those special statement pieces um, that you can, you know, you're either making them to wear um, to a special occasion or just because like you don't really need to have a reason, um, which, you know, that might be the case this year. So mm-hmm. popping back in, um, what's your general approach? First question, what what are the sprinkles? Oh, I don't think <laughs> those are just accessories. Okay. Yeah, like, they they just came up to my mind. <laughs> we need to I fully never... develop this I metaphor. <laughs> yeah. I just had a I was just visioning the cake and uh I was like, 
there's sprinkles too, anyway. There's gotta be. Yeah. Sorry, what was the question? <laughs> oh my I'm, gosh. I'm just super hungry right now. I know. I'm just <laughs> and now I just want to do bake cupcake. Okay. Right. Question is oh. what's your general approach oh. to so frosting? Like, do you start with a statement pattern piece or are you do you come at it from a different approach? How do you how do you normally frosting? So for me, um I usually take a um, standard pattern, often a TNT, usually pretty simple, and then I make it in a fancy, fancy fabric. Um, a lot of uh-huh. a lot of the fancier fabrics are best with very simple lines because mm-hmm. you want uh-huh. to keep the number of seams down. Oh yeah. Um, so it, I generally find it works really well to just take something I'm comfortable sewing and sew it in a fancier fabric. Yeah, that's a good idea. I think that's a smart approach. Yeah, I'm I mean even with so frosting, I feel like I'm super practical about it. I just cannot help myself. Um so I tend to do separates actually because then, ah. you know, you could like wear the pieces together but then also split them off and you know, if you pair something fancy with something a little bit more casual, potentially get a little bit more wear out of it, which is mm-hmm. always what I'm going for. Yeah, I often do mm-hmm. um the same thing, separates as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For me, it's just whatever comes for. Like sometimes it is the fabric that I. It's just like this gorgeous yeah. fabric. But then sometimes it is like this. I remember I made this. Um, I think it was my mashup two years ago on Berta. It was like this underlay, overlay kind of um, fancy dress. It was the pattern. And then I went shopping for the fabric, and I ended up getting you know fancy fabric too. So it really just depends on like what I'm making it for. But it's usually I don't go seeking a sew frosting project. It it finds me. <laughs> uh, and even if I just sometimes just sew it, even if I don't really have a specific place or time or occasion to wear it to, it just it makes me happy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think that's definitely like core to the spirit. Yeah. Of the, you know, yeah. the official sew frosting challenge on Instagram, but has kind of become its own like yeah. category. And I really... I really love the just because yeah. aspect of it. Mm-hmm. And I, maybe someday I will be less practical <laughs> and I will just make, you know, whatever, um, which which I love. I love that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And especially now, too, if you're making more, um, you know, loungewear and comfy clothes, just to kind of sh- shift like a mindset and be like, you know what? I am going to do it. So frosting this year. I'm going to make something fancy. I don't know where I'm going to wear it when, but maybe I'll just, you know – just make it anyway, just like setting aside time for this like special project. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think it's also depending on the pattern you use, depending on the fabric, it's a good way to kind of skill build and yeah, get out of your normal out. little bit. Yes. So I think um, I think it's good for lots of reasons. Mm-hmm. Let's talk um, favorite so frosting looks that you've made. Um, do you have any favorites that stand out from past years? When I do so frosting, it's usually for um it's usually for this time of year. It's usually around mm-hmm, mm-hmm, around mm-hmm. Christmas, New Year's. Um and apparently because of that, um, it really tends towards red velvet. Mm-hmm. Um I did I a it. I did a, a willow top several years ago. Um I was going on a cruise. Um and so I was going to be in the Caribbean over sort of right before Christmas. Um, and so for the cruise, I made a willow top out of red stretch velvet. And then I embroidered it um, with these um, Christmas Ooh. decorations I picked up at Urban Threads. Um, super pretty. It has, the, there's this one that's like this wide drape with all of these like Christmas ornaments. And I was like, I've got to use this for something. So I put it across the back of the shoulders. Um, and then nice. I put something else from the collection um, in the lower front. Um, and it's really pretty. I like it a lot. Um, and then mm-hmm. my other red velvet is actually very simple. Um, it's my Cosmo Maxi skirt. It's one of my favorite patterns for knits. Um, red stretch velvet. I will just Do say you, you look like you're draped in red velvet right now. <laughs> <laughs> your background is, you have a red background and like the inside of your hood is red and it just yes. looks like you're just I'm just, co- I'm just covered in red. <laughs> yes, I use I use a, a red fleece uh, blanket um, 
to uh, <laughs> to muffle sound um, when I'm recording. Yeah, so yeah. I always have this dramatic red background. <laughs> so dramatic. Anyway, I just had, as you were saying, it was so funny. And it's funny because um, I don't usually wear very much red. But um, right around yeah. Christmas, my so frosting tends to go red velvet. I don't know. Now, do you wear those two items together, Kate? Was that what no, you intended? No, they are oh. not. You, you made them at separate times. Mm-mm. They're not. They're not the same um, fabric, and they one's kind of a cranberry, and one's very, very Ooh. bright. Um, so I don't really think they coordinate very well. So usually, I'll wear, you know, so, uh, like a sweater with a skirt, or um, I don't even remember off the top of my head what I used to wear with the, what I've worn with the. Probably a skirt of some sort, sort of a mm. neutral skirt with the red top. I also have to say bonus points for embroidering on stretch I velvet. Was just, yeah, That's I was impressive. just thinking that. It's uh, it's a bit of a challenge, I'll be honest with you, but mm. it's really worth it in the end if you if you do the all of the things right tips. Um, use cutaway stabilizer, um, ideally fusible, so that that fabric does not move at all when you're embroidering it, and you definitely mm-hmm. need a topper. Yeah, so. <laughs> I learned that the hard way. I once tried to embroider velvet, before, and I just got my embroidery machine, and then I didn't know about toppers, and then and so it kept messing up, and so I embroidered it on another fabric, and then just like cut around it, and then hand stitched it on this velvet. And, like, mm-hmm. Always a good option for problem. <laughs> That's fabrics. a good workaround. Yes. Uh, yeah, That's my, make it work. Make it exactly. work. Make it work. Okay. How about you guys? What are your favorite so frosting looks? You know, I a couple of years ago I went simple, like super simple, and made a metallic blue box top. Um, and I love that top. I mean, it's really, it's a knit fabric. Um, it's kind of ribbed with little speckles of gold. And I actually wear that quite often. I just wore it for our um, party skirt so along uh, that we filmed. And it's kind of just a nice, fun piece to throw on whenever. It, it's not particularly dressy. Um, but last year, I actually made, I did a really simple metallic knit kind of um it's almost like a pleated knit fabric um in this gold metallic with a really simple it was a draft your own really simple black elastic waist and paired it with a um silverton blazer that i made in like a really basic black ponte and i think the combination of the um the blazer and the skirt is just really cute and it ended up looking really dressy. Um, I'll put a picture on uh, show notes, but that was definitely all about those separate pieces that I uh-huh. could, that I saw myself wearing in other scenarios um, through the year. But, but once they're all together, it's exactly. like this whole, oh, that's Yeah, fun. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't like incredibly fancy, but for me, yeah. it was very fancy. <laughs> yes. I'm excited to see this picture. Yeah, and I, I do think, I do think that um, when it comes to so frosting, I think a blazer is a really good option because like that's like something that you, and there are probably some other garments like that. Like it's like no matter what you make it in, it kind of looks fancy, like more fancy than Mm -hmm. every day. Um, Yeah. And then, but you know, if you make it in a knit, it's super easy, comfortable and stretchy. Um, But, and I, I haven't, I have to admit, I haven't worn that blazer very much this year um but oh gosh i wonder why always an option yeah (laughs) it doesn't pair well with pajama bottoms so (laughs) it's out (laughs) well but what we should just yeah all of our meetings should be blazers required (laughs) (laughs) i'm I'm okay with that business on the top (laughs) exactly (laughs) pj fans on the bottom that's such a good idea like yeah. thinking of like a blazer as like a pa- – I didn't think of that until now, but I do uh, – I didn't make it, but um, I bought it – like I think t- – I got it 10 years ago. It's this black sequin blazer, and I have worn it so many times. And I think I need a, a so frosting blazer. That's just, I didn't even think of that. And even Ooh. when you wear it like jeans and a t-shirt too. Totally. Like, wear, like it's so it's cool. cool. Like you can just mm-hmm. really uh, – <gasps> oh, I just had an idea. You know, so, and you also reminded me, we were talking about our favorite projects, definitely my party skirt, like that, bro- that, yeah. that um, gold, green, pink, black brocade. So 
I have a little bit left over. A blazer in that brocade Ooh. would be mm. perfection. I think that's going to be on my list. That would be so cute. That would be so cute. Yeah. And I love it because you really could wear it in so many scenarios. Like totally. You could wear it with jeans. You could yeah. wear it with some nice slacks. You know, you could mm-hmm. really get a lot of mileage out of it. Yeah. Oh, and then I could do the lapels in the reverse. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, there you go. Note that down. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, so many projects. (laughs) I'm still not even – I even have some just some of my free patterns from the last episode not even sewn yet. I know. I need to get through those. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, it's writing fancy brocade blazer so I don't forget. (laughs) Meg, I feel like you of the three of us have probably made the most like – Yes. So frostingest stuff. Yeah, um, I agree. What are your favorites? My my favorite. I was going through uh, my closet, and I think, well, is my wedding like jump? Is that kind of a so frosting too? Well, totally. That's obviously my favorite. Totally <laughs> working with the lit. Like it was definitely time consuming. But my lime green sequin jumpsuit from last oh, year yeah. was amazing and I love it. It's so amazing. Yeah. And then recently um, as part of Style Revive Season 2, you can watch it now for free. (laughs) (laughs) Um, The last episode, it's not not launching quite yet. Um, It'll be released in a couple weeks, but I turn this like fancy duvet into a jacket and it is so extra. It is amazing. It is. I just can't wait for you guys to see. Like I literally thrifted like it look, it would be a, it'd actually be a really ugly like blanket, but a jacket has fringe, and that's been one of my like recently made like so frostings. Like it's amazing. It's so. amazing. Yeah. Like, the tr- I mean, I love the transformation aspect of it, but it's also just like it's the coolest jacket. It looks like straight off the runway, yeah. and you made it from like a blanket. I know. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> We should do like it. That was that's such a so frosting, like on a budget, you know? <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. And I think, sure. I mean, that's an important part of it too. For like, you, sure. If, Cause yeah. yeah. Some of those fabrics can get pretty pricey. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't think, I, I don't know, but I'm assuming most of us are probably not he- heading off to big holiday parties this year, but definitely it's not. always nice to dream what if. So I was curious to know if um, if you were going to, you know, put on real pants and leave the house, <laughs> um, what fancy thing would you make for yourself this year? Oh, well, I am... I'm going to be laid up for most of December, so I am definitely not going to any holiday parties. Yes. But I um, I think I mentioned, I can't remember if I mentioned it on the show or just talking to you guys, but um, like a month ago, I was at uh, Joanne's and I found a remnant of um, sequin fringe fabric. <gasps> Ooh, and nice. I picked I picked that up in half a second because, you know, it was on sale for being a remnant. Um, and so I would love to do something like that. I've got some leftover. Um, it's, it's actually cotton with a metallic uh, thread woven through it. Um, so I've got that leftover from another project. And I would love to take that and make something sort of simple, probably a tank because there's not that much left. And then um, adorn it with um, gold sequin fringe in some fashion um i yeah especially since fringe is in this fall i could totally (laughs) i could totally see myself doing that um and someday i will i swear i will um it may not be it may not be this holiday season (laughs) to be perfectly honest with you but yeah that's what i'm dreaming of nice well i actually um, I didn't read the the full question when I was. I just I so I just um I wrote down fancy and then I was like oh if I were to go to a holiday party yeah. but now I'm like you know what I would go in fancy silk pajamas you can dress <laughs> those yeah. up you can wear those uh, out yeah I definitely yeah I really want to make like really fancy like get really nice like silk and like piping and add some um embroider like a nice like metallic monogram embroidery mm. i want to do like 
fancy pajamas as like my next after the brocade blazer, of course. So I would right. probably react to that, my dream holiday party. <laughs> you know, sorry, this is a bit of a detour, but um, earlier today I was looking at uh, folkwear patterns and they mm-hmm. one of their patterns Ooh. is for beach pajamas, which were a huge thing in the like 20s and 30s. And basically what it is, is a um, wrap jumpsuit with a kind of faux capey thing going on and these really <gasps> wide flowy um, flowy pants. And honestly, um, we made that pattern for a show that we did, oh, many, many years ago. And I just loved it. And I always thought that I needed to make that pattern for myself. And um, now I'm thinking that again, as you're t- talking about your... Um, so it's a jumpsuit with pajamas. a cape? Built um, in? it's, 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 you know, the, it's sort of a capelet attached sort of thing. Oh, like, okay. And, uh, yeah, it's super cute. Um, folk art, beach pajamas. I can't remember the number, but, um, you should go check it out. It's amazing. I just love the term patterns. beach pajamas. That's I know. so I like, know. super oh. elegant. It's, it's, <laughs> so it's really, I mean, it was designed as like, high, I don't know about high fashion, but it was fashionable loungewear, basically. Um, and so, I mean, what better thing to sew in 2020 and or early 2021 than fashionable loungewear. (laughs) That's awesome. I love that. Yeah. You know, I have it on the brain. This is definitely something that I'm probably not going to make this year, but maybe, maybe some, maybe someday I have it on the brain making a fancy boiler suit. Like, <gasps> you know, like a metallic yes. or um, probably metallic, um, some main, kind of woven. Like- but I had the the Blanca flight suit by Closet Core was on my list because I'm kind of obsessed with like, that's such a workwear inspired look. But I like mm-hmm. the idea of the challenge of trying to make it look kind of upscale. And I don't mm-hmm. think it would be too hard. That's so funny that you say that. I literally just bought the Thelma uh, Merchant and Mills oh, boiler yeah. suit this morning. <laughs> I love I, that, that one I wanted too. that. Yeah, um, yeah. I really want to do like a. I have um, all this black twill that I got, and I want to do with like all gold. Like I want to get all gold snaps accents. on it. Yeah, yeah. so that'll be awesome. Oh, so many things. So and many my things. Okay, so. blazer over top of that. Just exactly all the looks. All the looks. No, but a. Fancy boiler. I could so see you. And that would be so cool. Yeah, with like a woven with like a metallic, like, you know, thread, like a fiber running through it. Or exactly. Oh, that would be so nice. I would love that. Mm-hmm. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking maybe someday. What I'm probably more likely to sew this year is that I have been, I think I'm gonna do like sew frosting version for my um skating capsule wardrobe <gasps> that I'm yes! working on. I don't know. I mean, that's that's honestly things that I will wear and use. And I'm um I think my fabric is actually arriving today. It is the most like not me fabric that I've ever ordered, but it's this tie-dye velvet. It's a stretch <gasps> velvet. Oh. And I'm gonna make some bell bottom leggings with that for yes. skating specifically. Um, and I've also, um, I've been working on, um, getting, being a bad influence on some friends of mine and getting them into skating as well. And so we've been talking about like Excuse skating me. unitards. That's a good influence. Okay. I've been working on enabling people <laughs> in their skating journey. And, um, yeah, so I have. You've been influ- you're an, uh, an influencer, a skating <laughs> influencer. <laughs> So yeah, I have in mind, I just, I saw this um, little, it's like a knit jumpsuit kind of unitard thing. And I'm kind of interested in making it for myself. Again, like totally just because, but also something that I would wear um, skating. Wow. That's a thing now. I just took me right back into my dance costume. So exactly. I like a, a stretch velvet unitar. I made exactly. <laughs> hundreds of those and I, yeah. that's amazing. I don't think oh. I'll do, I don't think I'll do unitard in stretch velvet. I think oh, I'll do, I thought I was getting like, more really of a excited basic for that. Knit. Oh. No, stretch velvet, bell bottom leggings. Bell bottoms. Okay. You know, so practical. See, I, I can sometimes be a oh little, my gosh, you know, silly. Silly. not. It would not be hard to take those bell bottom leggings and then 
add a unit uh, add a top to make them bell bottom true stretch velvet uh jumpsuit style Double. unitard or you you just make like um like a bodysuit and then you could wear yeah you wear could, them together. it could have like a a unitard look you know That's- <laughs> <laughs> again like conversations that wouldn't be happening except if- for the pandemic I know. You I know, know, I would not be roller skating or talking about making stretch velvet bell bottoms, but here we are, and I'm kind of not sad about it. No. Gosh, no. I love like even like like, you know, I look at my I look at your Instagram feed, whatever, but also when you talk about these things, I just picture them and just watching yeah. watching you mental mentally watching you skate around in your in your um outfits. I just I love it. It makes me happy. Yeah, me too. Well, I'm so glad. But y'all should join me. Skating's super fun. Yeah, I have rollerblades, but is that still technically, can I? Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. You can totally do it. Yeah, I am. They're not as cool as yours. (laughs) (laughs) Well, no, Amanda has very cool skates. My my skates look like the coolest skates. My my skates look like um, Ice Dancer skates, but with um, roller, uh, with wheels instead of blades they're like yeah. white boots but um oh i really got to get out there one of these days yeah you probably do. not before the end of december yeah, yeah. hard hard time skating outside mm-hmm. hard time skating Colorado outside hard time skating when laid up after surgery yes mm-hmm. Rest sorry i'm gonna stop skate. talking about it <laughs> <laughs> rest now skate Any- later any other um, so frosting pattern approach thoughts? What you'll be making this year? I don't know. I'm kind of, even though it looks different this year, I'm kind of still inspired. Oh yeah, I'm. I'm actually super annoyed at this exact moment because I am so inspired, and I know that I have no time between now and when I'm just not going to want to sew. And so I'm like, but, but. But shiny, and I wanna. You know, but you don't have a holiday party deadline this year. So true. I was thinking there's a couple of things on my list that I know I'm not going to get to because I need to do some holiday sewing next. But I was thinking about maybe that week after Christmas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that like um, in the, in the yes in between and that in between you don't know I, what day it is. You're confused. Exactly. You're, yeah. <laughs> so I have velvet. been. I have been discussing having a Zoom New Year's Eve party with some friends. So, oh, you know, that's a good idea. Shiny yeah. top, pajama bottoms. Exactly. Makes sense. Done and done. Uh-huh. <laughs> I and love I'm just it. Thinking of blazer patterns, I've always wanted an excuse to make the Jessica, uh, the Jessica blazer by Closet Core. We'd have to. That one that seems one. so intimidating. I but know, but I also yeah. amazing. I know. I just think if I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go for well. it. And yeah. might as well. Uh, might as well do it. I love I it. I haven't made a blazer in so long. Yeah. It'll well, be, hey, I, I think let, I need a challenge. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna do I it. Like, <laughs> I like it. I like it. Well, let's take a quick break, and then we'll come back with some more so frosting fun. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes so frosting isn't about a gown pattern or an intricate fancy design. It can be all about the fabric too. Sometimes a t-shirt pattern can be just as chic and upscale if it's sewn in a fancy fabric. So what would you consider to be like fancy fabrics? Well, as I mentioned earlier, big fan of velvet. Um, Yes, me too. Anything with sequins. Um, I think brocade can be pretty fancy depending on. Yeah. I think most brocade is pretty fancy. Um, yeah. Anything with any metallic in it. Um, mm-hmm. Some satins, some are just kind of, bleh, but some of them are just like, oh, so gorgeous. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Some silks, uh, you know, a, a good silk charmeuse, or I always find a dupioni to be really, really beautiful. Oh, yeah. Um, but like a, a, how do you pronounce it? An, an oil? No, mm-hmm. um, the yeah. the rougher the rougher weave is a little bit more casual, so I wouldn't necessarily call mm-hmm. that um, fancy fancy. And then, of course, anything mm-hmm. with glitter on it or other kinds of sparkles. <laughs> yeah, those are the ones that kind of jump out at me. 
Mm-hmm. How about you, Amanda? I'd say, I mean, I'd say all those same things. I think for me, my my usual take on um, fancy fabric is something metallic. I think that's yeah. just my, it's my thing. Yeah. I like gold, um, bronze, like champagnes, all of those. Um, but a little, just a little bit of metallic. That's, um, yeah. And it doesn't even matter what it is. Like if it's metallic, it's fancy in my mind. So mm-hmm. <laughs> And that's a really sewable way to incorporate a fancy fabric. Totally. I feel like just mm-hmm. metallic because sometimes when you get into like really fancy fabrics, like some that I've listed, you know, they're um, they're they have three D attributes to them, like they're yeah. laser cut. Like those can be really difficult to sew, even oh, yeah. sequins. But um, yeah, if you do want to, yeah, branch into a, like a little bit fancier, like mm-hmm. even like a, a brocade, they're really it's just like a woven. They're just kind of right. have a sheen or a metallic uh, thread running through it. Mm-hmm. Um, so that kind of leads into another question I had: is like, are fancy fabrics like always that much more difficult to sew? I always like they have kind of like I don't know if it's like a st- a reputation. They have a reputation. Yeah, reputation. Totally. That's I was, I was trying to find that word that they're. Um, like just so hard to sew. Um, I think even I think velvet that, too. Like it has its mm-hmm. little tricks and stuff. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah, there there are definitely considerations for a lot yeah. of them. Like velvet, you have to pay attention to the nap, and there oh, yeah. are certain ways to to sew velvet and to press velvet. Pressing velvet is like a very you know careful thing that you have to do to keep from oh, crushing yeah, the definitely. pile. <laughs> Me too. Yeah. And if yes, learn that one the hard and way. Sa- same yeah. thing with sequins; they they can be problematic. They can break oh, your needles. Uh, yeah. Um, Meg has a great set of tips in the. Oh yeah. It is December January issue of mm-hmm. Sew News about sewing uh, sequin fabric, especially reversible sequin fabric, which is fantastic. Oh, um, that fabric is so amazing! It really is that the <laughs> a, is that the mermaid? Yeah, yeah. The sequins. Yeah. Yeah. I have a pillow uh, in a mermaid's and I just sit and I just, and everyone who comes over, yeah. uh, well, once, like once upon a time, yeah. um, everyone's like yeah. just sitting, just, you don't even realize it, but you're just playing and they're right. You can write stuff in the sequin, mm-hmm. but that's one's a difficult one to, so I broke many, like I tried to, this was before I wrote, this was like years ago when I, before I wrote the tips, I tried to like surge and I broke like so many needles. On yeah. <laughs> oh, geez. Uh, yeah. On the other hand, but. Certain fabrics are actually fancy fabrics are actually very nice to sew, and mostly I'm thinking about silk dubioni, which is a freaking right. dream. It is so it's just it's easy to sew, it's easy to press, it just it's it's so yeah, that's nice a good to one. work with. Mm-hmm. Um, and like for example, I mentioned I had some leftover metallic fabric that was cotton with a metallic weave in it. That one was very easy to sew because it's just a yeah. little cotton um, mm-hmm. with that extra bling to it. So I, I don't think it's always true that they're hard to sew, but it's often true that they're yes. difficult to sew. Yeah. Like when I was sewing my wedding dress, like my the lace at the top, it was like a really open weave mm. um, lace. And then with the edges and match, like it was definitely, it just took so much long. And the pressure that it was my wedding dress. Right. Too. Yeah. yeah. Dress. That I was like about, a, I forgot about mm. lace, but yes, lace, also lace. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. And, sh- and sheer fabrics, too. Like, mm, if you're yeah. getting, like, a really nice sheer silk chiffon, oh, yeah. that is not fun to sew. And usually, you know, <laughs> patterns in that, like, they're, it's, they're, you need so much if you want, like, lots of volume and, like, uh, you know, I love wearing, like, sil- like a beautiful, like, silk or chiffon fabric, but sewing and even cutting is just. Mm-hmm. Cutting is sometimes um, even harder than sewing yes. is. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um. And also faux furs can be a um, – I would consider like a fancy fabric as yeah. well. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, for sure. Which definitely is – it t- it's definitely has yeah, considerations to sew, yeah. um, sew as well. So what's the fanciest fabric you have ever sewn? Amanda, you want to start this one? Maybe like oh the my most gosh. neat fancy – yeah. Um. I have not sewn very many fancy fabrics because I just don't wear fancy yeah. stuff. And really, um, you know, when I've been in the last couple of years just sewing a lot more, it's really been about wardrobe basics. 
So I'd say fanciest is probably the most expensive, which was um, some of the Pendleton wool that we... Mm -hmm. um, Oh, yeah, that's a fancy fabric. I mean, it's not hard to sew. Um, and it was it was a dream to work with, um, it's like but sewing definitely butter. It's exactly. Like, oh, oh, it's but so nice. Cutting it, especially, I was working with some plaid wool, and that was I was just sweating buckets, oh. and I messed it up <laughs> so many times. And <laughs> thankfully, I had some extra. But um, I'd say that's probably like the most. It, it's not necessarily fancy, but it's definitely. <laughs> just- Pricey, high quality. I just love that. Yeah, I, I, I was the fanciest. Fan. And Amanda goes, <laughs> wool plaid. Plaid wool. <laughs> I love <laughs> well, I think That's so good. But I know that for sure, like pressure's on, like when you're yeah. working with that. With a oh, pricey yeah. fabric like that. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, when I was in, uh, well, actually, when I was in college and const- and and we were, we were in a class and each of us was constructing a dress for a um for a show um, as our pro- big project for the year. Um, I felt really lucky because my roommate ended up getting a signed address that had a um, overlay panel out of lace that was $90 a yard. <gasps> um, yeah. And this was around 2001, 2002. So, I mean, it's pro- it would be more now. And Oh my god. Like her cutting that for her was so terrifying. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so glad I didn't get that dress. <laughs> <laughs> because no, I nobody else had to do anything quite that stressful. But it is, it's it, I mean, cutting into something that's really expensive is terrifying. Oh, especially, I know. especially if you didn't like if it's for somebody else, if like you don't oh, own it. Oh, that's and even you can't cutting even, up like, like something for someone else is not even fair. Like, I can right. trust it. Yeah. Well, yeah. And I mean, she, it, even it if was it's not owned, yeah. it was owned by the, <laughs> the theater department. And, you know, if she messed oh, it up, God. it wasn't her own money down the drain, but at the same time it was somebody else's. And so that was, oh, yeah. Um, but as for me, I think um, there were a couple of projects I did when I was in the theater um, and in both, they were two different. No, no, I take it back. They were the same show. Um, but they they were t- two instances that were very similar, and it was um, sewing multiple different fancy fabrics together. So there was like sequin fabric, and there was lame, Ooh. and there was um, like knit with metallic woven through it. And I can't even remember, but it was it was these whole big big selections of these different things. And one of them we were piecing in strips. Um, which was terrifying, but uh, and very irritating because, by the way, I hate sewing lame more than anything, um, <laughs> probably in the world. Um, lame. Ugh. Anyway, and then the other one, it was uh, we were doing Pinocchio, and it was for the Blue Fairy, and it was supposed to be this like multi-layered skirt of all of these different pieces. It was it was very. Um, it was very that sounds so beautiful. It, mm-hmm. it really was, it, and it wasn't like full layers. It was, it was like s- small pieces, just almost like a tutu sort of thing going on. Mm-hmm. And I had to sew all of it to a sequined fabric waistband, and oh. I was literally oh, see Meg's <laughs> face. I I remember doing this. It was I would sew five stitches, and then the the um oh. needle would break and I would or the thread would break. I think it was the thread, not the needle. The thread would break. And I would I thought replace the both thread. Would just break. <laughs> um, I think I broke several needles too, but but I remember <laughs> just having to rethread it every like five to ten stitches because I was sewing through so many layers with the sequins. Oh, yeah. Uh like because it was like four layers of the sequin fabric because the waistband was turned under, you know, and the sequin fabric will just shred Thread. What was there a zipper? How did it close? Uh yeah, I think there was a zipper. Um or or it that had a little also overlap. Been fun. Some, <laughs> I don't I don't remember. I I feel like there was a base layer um that the zipper probably went into and then it was kind of covered with more of these oh, pieces that, of fabric. That's a good um trip. yeah. But, but yeah, it, it was the waistband. I just remember the waistband. Oh, God, it was a nightmare. It was so terrible. Um, and I resented it for – I still resent it, and it's been, like, 15 years. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, we <laughs> resented it for 15 years. 
So, I'm sorry I made I sorry I brought it up. Oh no, no, it's fine. It's a good story. No, but I just like I hadn't thought about like I've I've blocked out a lot of it. Like I couldn't tell you like all of the details of Until all the different now. fabrics. But but yeah, it was just it was so many layers and and just the sequins were bad enough, but you had all of the rest of those like metallic and sparkly fabrics in between. And it was just like, oh, oh God, this will never end. You know the best part? Uh-huh. She wore a corset over it, so I'm pretty sure you never saw the waistband. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that would have been really itchy too. An yeah, under it's true. like those sequins, like mm-hmm. uh, as the turned under waistband from the inside. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if she was wearing. She might have. Well, she's probably wearing I'll tights have, like, something at least. On. Yeah, no, that's to uh, cover her waist. But yeah, I, I, I can't say that. I think that that waistband choice was the best choice of all time. Um, but so you basically sewed every fancy fabric just in one yeah. garment. You just yeah, put them much. all together. I love yeah, all in Actually, I'm just pitch- <laughs> I'm just picturing because it the thing with fancy fabrics and expensive fabrics is when you have a scrap that's even like you don't throw it away. You're like no. this is <laughs> so I'm just picturing now like a garment a or something with where a patchwork of mm-hmm. all my fa- like I'm now thinking like fur sequins like my brocade like just all together and now I'm like jacket and that would be so cool. <laughs> I want to tell you to do it. But then you would blame me when you try to do it. So I'm not going to. <laughs> I'll be selective with my. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Or maybe I- just a waistcoat. So there's no, it's like open or that would be yeah. kind of cool. Like a little yeah. like um, waistcoat would be really nice. And like a pat. Yeah. If I just cut them all in square, like a, like a all like fancy fabric patch that would actually be really cool because mm-hmm. do not throw those scraps away no it's like a 20 dollar scrap <laughs> yeah I, I literally have a uh a, a little bin in the, on the shelves above my head um that incidentally has reversible sequins on it um on the front of it and that has all of my fancy scraps yeah mm-hmm well wow the fanciest fabric i've ever sewn was actually this um metallic faux fur and it was it's so, I'm obsessed with it I, I made this like little kind of like capey cardigan thing and it was paneled with faux suede too wow. um yeah so that was and I also made like um the metallic faux fur skirt and I have a I have some leftover I do really want to make a coat out of it but it's just like so it's like the the tips of yeah the fur were like dipped in like gold like and this just dripping in gold and silver there so i love Ooh. that fabric so um that's probably and also um again that dress that i made a couple years ago for new year's eve it's this like mesh but it has like they're not sequent they're they're like glued on like pearls and stuff and so they raise quite hard like um and they're really, yeah, hard and they are raised. And so that was like so tricky to – because like the needle yeah. wouldn't punk so I had to like pick right. it off of the seam. And when it turned out really good because uh, it kind of looks like it was just like pearls on my skin. So that was like kind of cool, um, kind of like a – that was really nice um, and super fancy. And I still have a bunch of that left over too because I bought enough for the – there was a gathered skirt overlay. And as soon as I started sewing with it, I go, mm-hmm. there's no, no way, way I can gather this <laughs> at right. all. <laughs> uh, so those were some fancy fabrics I worked with. But yeah, but then let's talk about maybe some – if you do have like a really fancy fabric, yeah, maybe with um, some – yeah, 3D aspects, some fringe, some fa- – like, there's so many. Actually, a really good selection of fancy fabrics um, I was looking through is at Mood. They have so many fancy fabrics. They oh, like yeah. You go to the fashion fabrics and, like, novel – if you ever look in, like, a novelty section of a, a fabric online store or – you can find some really, really cool, cool things for sure. Um, but what are some, like, good simple patterns – uh, for uh, like a sew frosting fab uh, fabric, like something mm-hmm. simple. Well, um, like I mentioned, for my um red velvet top, I use the willow the willow tank um from Grainline Studio, um, which is a very nice basic um top. Also, I think the Antero top would be good for stuff like that. Um, we're always mm-hmm. a big fan of the Antero top here. Oh um, yeah, a sequin Antero would be super be so cute. cute. 
Yeah. I um, am basically in love with the Cosmo maxi skirt from SBCC. Um, and it is, um, it's kind of got a little fishtail thing going on. It's knit. It's very easy to sew. Um, again, red velvet and it just, it looks amazing. Um, and I love it. Um, I will say that um, on the cover of last holiday, so news. So um, that would have been December, 2018. To, no, I'm sorry. 2019 to yep. January, 2020. Ha ha. Um, we did, uh, we had some fancy Zadie jumpsuits. One I think was sequin mm-hmm. and one was oh, velvet. Yeah. And they were both really pretty, really classy. Um, I, I think I don't, the Zadie's not the easiest pattern I've ever made, but it's not super complicated and Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. it has good clean lines and it, yeah, it just made a really, really pretty fancy jumpsuit. I also think I have to, I am very, very biased, but I think the Pagosa pants could be super cute for a pair of cropped um, pants done up in a, I don't know, a satin with a um, yeah, like a silk or um, yeah, or silk or satin with win. like some <laughs> sort of a win. trim going on, maybe around the yeah. maybe around the bottom or um, down the out, out seams, something like that. Um, I definitely, yeah. I definitely think those could be very pretty. Honestly, in like a faux pleather too mm, would be yes. so chic. Like, oh my gosh, so chic. Because then you Definitely. don't have to deal with like a closure. Like you can just, it's like, yeah, because it's basically, it's pretty bought. And then it's kind of, it's almost like a little paper bag waist. That, exactly. Um, mm-hmm. And that looks so good in folk. When you have like, all, and you make like the pleather belt too. Oh, and adding that to my list. <laughs> <laughs> that would be super cute. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's a good idea, Kate. The Gosa pants. Gosa pants. Okay. So those are my my ideas. Those what are good ones. Think? Mm-hmm. I like those. Um, mine are also kind of thrown back to um, a few I mentioned before. The Lou Box top is very, it's similar to the Antero, um, can do in woven or knit. Um, so I think in a fancy fabric. Who makes um, that pattern? I was trying to. It's so DIY. Oh, okay. Yep. Um, check out that pattern. Really... I love that. That's the gold top that you're wearing mm-hmm. when we did yep. our, our party skirts. Oh, it's so cute. Exactly. Um, knit blazer, still a big, big fan of blazer in general. Knit is definitely the way to go for me. Uh, we have the Silverton blazer. Um, and I oh, also, yeah. s- I've sewn up the Morris blazer by Greenline Studio. And I did that one in this, um, kind of textured Ponte paired with some metallic, uh, vegan leather it was like a bronze color um Ooh. that was also that was pretty fancy fabric i forgot about totally that one was. if i could um, jump in um mm-hmm. i would also for jackets if you want to go woven the salzburg jacket uh, oh I think you're right super pretty it point. has such a nice flared sleeve and it's mm-hmm. actually very i think it's a pretty simple pattern i haven't made it yet but it's on my list um mm-hmm. so that one's also a great one i'm gonna make it out of a silk jacquard so it'll be pretty frost frosting e sorry mm-hmm. back to you Amanda. um i do like the zadie jumpsuit and i think that there are ways you know it's got that um bias binding but i think you could totally skip that go with a facing instead mm-hmm. you know you could you could really alter that one to make it work for a bunch of different fabrics so i would have that one on my list as well as the amy jumpsuit by closet Core. yes I, that um, was on my list that i was thinking too that's a really yeah, easy one to like a velvet that would be yeah, so gorgeous so pretty and i think i think again like it has a facing so maybe maybe things with facings are just a better plan for if you're working with yeah to eliminate like top stitch yeah because yeah. Exactly. Um, them, yeah, like a cleaner finish, and mm-hmm. um, and I also think the simple lines of that one, plus the yeah. kind of like the big voluminous legs. I mean, it's a statement piece on its own, but if you pair that with a nice fabric, it really. I think it's one of those patterns that really shows off the fabric that you use. Um, mm-hmm. So I I do. I've only made one of those, and I made it in this like um, leopard print home decor weight oh, fabric. I remember that and I, have, I, have, I loved it. I loved it, but I have not worn it very much. Um, I think I need to make it in something a little bit drapier. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It's on the list somewhere. The really yeah. long someday list. 
<laughs> yeah, actually, I just um, I just got some. It hasn't come in yet, but I ordered some kind of tensile um, animal mm-hmm. print fabric. So that would be perfect Ooh, be in the perfect. Amy in the Amy jumpsuit. Maybe that's what I I don't I wasn't sure what I was going to make with it. So that's a really good idea because I I just picture that like layered over like a, a turtleneck would be mm-hmm. so cute. Um, Definitely. Oh, love these. Yeah, just a little. That's like an everyday so fra- Like that's such a wearable like yeah, exactly. you know, kind of fancy fancy thing. Uh, yeah, I had the the Nini culottes mm-hmm, too. Are sure. like you could make some really fancy pants um, with that with that pattern for sure. Amanda, didn't you make some Ninis that were like pink velvet? Yes, pink velvet <gasps> that they have like a little bit of a rib to them. Um, they they're are so pretty. They're so fancy, but they're also so comfortable. Comfy, like stretch yeah. velvet is just. So I love stretch velvet. But yeah, oh. I definitely messed those up when I made them. I think I cut, <laughs> I forgot about nap and <laughs> then I recut the back and I did it wrong again. So oh. it was just kind of one of those, you know, and that's the thing. If you don't work with those fancy fabrics very right. often, it can be hard to kind of like go back to them and remember all those little tips and tricks and things that you need to remember when you work with them. Yeah. And I also wrote on my list, um, Berta Easy patterns are really sleek lot and they are really easy to sew and they have diagrams for them. So those are really good patterns for um, sew frosting. Like even you can make like a sew frosting coat and I, they have coat patterns that are so easy to make. Like it's just, there's no like you know, crazy details. They're like belted or uh, left open and they're really sim- – like a really fancy coat is not that hard to make. That's such a good idea because then yeah. I think you can wear it like all winter long yeah. whenever you need uh-huh. to dress up a little bit. And But mm-hmm. it's also, you know, for the night of yeah. a special event. Mm-hmm. Um, I always forget about coats. Like a, yeah, I, like, like a – Faux fur, I would get dressed like, or a fuzzy. up, yes, yeah. and then have like my same old coat <laughs> to wear with whatever it was. Like that's, that's there's nothing like a parka me. over like a exactly. little black dress. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes you just gotta, because sometimes it's oh, really totally, hard. totally. Oh, <laughs> uh, I know. I remember the days when I used to go to you know the clubs, you know, all the, you're waiting outside in line and you're in all these fancy, and then everyone has these like, just such casual coats on. Like, yep. was, And then there was the, the girls that just didn't even wear, and you know, in Canadian winter shit, like just bring your coat, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I, I yeah. would, I would always bring my coat, but uh, that was funny. <laughs> and then also just draft. I, I always, um, for fan, I have a lot of fancy skirts. I have this like pleated velvet and just draft your own skirt just cut a rectangle Mm -hmm. and you know put an elastic in it and it's voila it's done voila i love that done (laughs) (laughs) and sometimes i even if you make it long like a maxi skirt i've worn it before like um you put it up to like a tube dress and then you belt it too a little two in one (laughs) that's amazing yeah i love that idea yeah yeah i remember a shrug or a jacket over that I remember doing that with a like a knee length skirt when I was in college. It oh. was <laughs> very short. Um, <laughs> I must I must have been wearing spankies under it, but yeah, ah, memories. Okay, so I have a would you rather to end up this segment. Okay, would you rather <laughs> sew a crazy difficult pattern, but in just like a simple, like easy to sew fabric, but it's it's still nice, or a simple pattern in an, oh my gosh, this sucks to cut and sew in everything fabric, but it's just so gorgeous. I would go simple, um, simple pattern, hard fabric. Yeah. Okay. Because I just feel like, I don't know. I feel like the fabric itself speaks yeah. pretty loudly. You know, and so if you, if you really, if you get something special, you don't have to work that hard with it. You know? Honestly, really fancy fabric can cover up a lot of it's like, true. Mista- mistakes. Like, yeah. A good tip with even faux fur, you, it, you, it looks fancy, but if you have mistakes in the inside, like no one will know. Exactly. They, it, like the high pile covers mm-hmm. up a lot if you have lots of fringe and extra like additions. So that's another thing. How about you, Kate? 
I'm having a lot of trouble with this one. I really mm-hmm. am because sometimes I feel like it would be it it it's nicer to just sew something to to really d- yep. dive into your skills with something that's not going to be a problem. Yep. But mm-hmm. I think if I were making something so frosting, I think I would go for the simple pattern and the hard fabric as well. Um because I think in the end that's going to be more striking. Yep, I think that's I think that's my final vote. But it was uh-huh. really hard choice. <laughs> How about you, May? I think I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the first one. Um, just kind of thinking of my new brocade blade because my the brocade when I sewed my skirt, it's a pre, it's a very easy fit. Like it pressed well. Um, it nice. wasn't sh- you know the, it's nice and stable. It's not shifty, but it's still fancy. So I'm gonna go with the first one and kind of just it's still a fancy fabric, but it's easy to sew and it's, doesn't so. Yeah, end result gotta, will be just mm-hmm. that much more amazing. Uh, Oh, yeah. I have to get lining. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Is there? Oh hand yeah. Stitching? Oh no! Probably a little bit. It's, oh, please don't tell me there's a welt pocket. <laughs> <laughs> but welt pockets are so oh. satisfying when you get them right. Oh, I kn- when you get them right. Um, I remember I made um on one of my, I have uh, my trench dress so along one of the samples it, it has welt pockets and one of them didn't turn out and so I just put a stud over it and now they have. They're studded pockets. Nice. <laughs> just the corner was just all messed up. Design you feature. Know? Yeah, design feature. At least with the, the broke, it's it's not like even if it's not perfect, it's pretty busy fabric. So you yeah. won't mm-hmm. feel again, that's a that's actually a good thing with these fancy yeah, exactly. fabrics. The, there's such a wow factor that you're not looking at the little details. Yeah, the right? construction as much. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Oh, well, I'm feeling fancy. How about you guys? Yeah, I, I'm really feeling super not expecting that. Super inspired, um, and mm-hmm. yes. Well, since we're uh, feeling inspired, how about we jump yeah. into our Sojo segment where we talk about what's giving us our sewing inspiration this week? Um, I think for all of us, it might be this conversation. But um, yeah. hey, Amanda, why don't you start us off? What's your Sojo this week? Um, Well, I feel like for a couple of weeks, I have been kind of all over the place. And I have taken that to new levels this week. Mm -hmm. I am, I mean, the good news is I'm sewing a lot and it feels really good. It's finally cold and I feel inspired to be in my sewing space. Also, I cleaned it, which helps a lot. Um, You put up some lights. I I put up some lights. It's super festive in here. So cool. Uh, But I have been sewing everything. I have been sewing some basic tops. Um, I just made um, my kiddos some new stockings with some Pendleton wool that I had left over. <gasps> oh, those are so cute. I, saw I, those. I sewed undies for the first time. <gasps> I need to get my, I'm getting my gift process started like tomorrow. My Black Friday purchases are on their way and Ooh. I already know what I want to make with all the fabric I got. And now yeah. I want to sew a sequin and tarot. So <gasps> oh! I know that is. That, Do you have that, a sequin fabric already? No, I don't. Um, so I'll have to find something. Yeah. But that, that just, I was like, yep, that clicked. Going to have to add that That would to be the list. so cute. Yeah. Is it cute. going to be um, mermaid sequins? <laughs> I don't know. I feel weird about making a mermaid sequin top. Okay. Like, I don't necessarily want, I mean, you could. You could still pet me, I guess. I was just going to say, you're going to have people. Okay, are yeah, I can see that. I mean, it would be it would be just my kids there. They would totally dig that. But yeah, I'll find something fancy. I'm going to do it. Yay. How about you, Meg? What's your, what, what, what's going on with you? So Joe Wise. <laughs> well, actually, I've been, for the past week, um, every night I've been working um, on this kind of commission that I'm doing for Julian's, uh, where Julian's work, making these like painting covers. So that's been kind of fun, just doing like some oh, really nice. simple, yeah, some really simple stuff. Um, and next I'm going to, I've been working through, I went on a cutting craze. And so I've made... Um, this kind of Berta linen dress. Um, it's like a fall dress. It's like a fall linen. It's like brown with green 
florals on it. So that's been fun. And then I made the in inspiration for our free pattern, I made the peppermint wrap top in this uh, Liberty London fabric. Nice. Um, and yeah, so I'm just kind of working through – I have a Zadie cutout and I have two silk tops and a pair of pants that are already cut out. So I'm just kind of working through those. So yeah, I'm in so in zone. So in zone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm just liking my evenings now sewing. Um, yeah. It's really nice. Well, I am not in the sewing zone. Um, I am mm-hmm. in the uh, prep for other stuff zone. Um, but – and I, honestly, I don't have very much time that I can do any sewing um, coming up. Um, I have yeah. my mom's birthday party on Saturday and um, stuff like that. But um, tomorrow, as of the day we're recording, so it'll be over by the time this drops, um, yeah. we are doing our holiday social. And I'm going to have a little bit of time to just sit down and sew some holiday masks for me and my husband. Oh, good idea. And I'm really just looking forward to uh, working with some Christmas fabric and hanging out with some cool people and just yeah. having some having some time to, uh, yeah, take, taking that little hour out of my day to um, just do something simple and, and fun. Mm-hmm. And um, then... We'll see if there's time to do anything else, and there probably won't be. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. and if, if you're listening to this and you attended, we thank you, and we oh hope you yes, had fun. <laughs> yes, I hope it was thank good. you so much. If you I hope came. it was good. <laughs> and if you missed it, we really hope we'll be able to do it again sometime soon yes. for you. Yes. And I just received notice that my fabric that I'm supposed to sew tomorrow in it just was delivered. So Yay. Oh, I'm good. Very about, cutting, cutting it close. <gasps> oh. All right. So let's uh, do our last segment. Let's do our sew and tell segment. So last episode, we asked what your favorite free patterns were, and we got some great answers. So Amanda, why don't you start us off? Sure. On Instagram, we heard from at so she will who said, my favorite freebie are the Acacia undies from Megan Mason. <gasps> um, are those the ones that you made? No, I oh. made the Noel undies from Madeline. Ooh. And Ooh. but I need to check out the Acacia. I'm super I excited. Know. Yeah, that the one I used was also a free pattern. I think there's actually quite a good uh yep. you know collection of free undies patterns out there. All the more reason to jump in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I know. They, just reading through these comments, I noted so many. Like, there was so many that I didn't know, I know. about. And so Me I too. just added it. So it's a great resource, too. Yeah. Um, so another comment we got from Kathy Healy754. Great name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, love, <laughs> I love the Agnes Dress Swing Top by Hala Patterns. It looks great on a variety of body shapes, and it's a good, quick one to sew. I love a quick sew, too. Yeah, yeah definitely. You have to check that one out, too. Yeah, I I like things that uh, have dress options as well. It's a little yeah, harder to I find love, the yeah, free dresses. A, a swing top hybrid. Swing silhouette, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, love that. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we also heard from at Donita Sews, who said, I love the Laundry Day tee from Love Notions. It even offers a great range of sizes. My granddaughters and I have enjoyed the tiny tulip tee from Patterns for Pirates. I make it and they wear it. It is adorable. <laughs> and that that it, that comment is adorable, too. <laughs> the tiny tulip Free tee from Patterns for patterns. Pirates. Yeah, we I didn't talk into that, that at all. Yeah. yeah. I feel like that's a whole other category that would definitely be worth diving into. Probably yeah. should be an episode at some point. I was just thinking mm-hmm. a whole another episode. <laughs> yeah. So um, this year or this episode, oh my gosh, I'm sorry. I don't know where my brain is. Um, so this <laughs> episode, our question for you is, what's your take on sew frosting this year? Are you going to sew something for some Zoom stuff? Or are you going to skip it entirely? Are you looking for um, sew lou- or frosting loungewear? Tell us, tell yeah. us what's going on with you and sew frosting. And answer our would you rather question too. Yeah. yeah. Let us know. <laughs> Tell us what you would like. It's a good we have a t- two for yeah. two for one on on the show here, which I guess was almost <laughs> inevitable. Um, unless we all said the same thing. 
<laughs> anyway, tell us what well, you think. I don't know about you guys. I that is that was such an inspiring show. Um, I know. Of course, oh on the so frosting side, but I I did want to mention um, on the exact opposite end of the spectrum on the kind of sporty loungy <laughs> and we have the um palmer pullover so along just launched on so daily um so you can get the free pattern you can get the free video you can make one for yourself um it also make a really great gift there's a ton of design options kind of built into mm-hmm. the pattern and i just love it so much it's also really really great for skating just in case oh, <laughs> oh good to know yeah <laughs> Yeah, I printed one out yesterday. I have this green striped velvet, like velour Ooh. Kind of knit. So I love I that think, idea. Yeah, yeah, and I get to cut. It's striped, and I'm going to cut like the the yoke face where the zipper is, and like the opposite stripe direction. I'm going to play with like kind of stripe uh, placements. So. Oh my gosh, I cannot nice. wait to see that. I love yeah. stripe play. Mm-hmm. I know, me too. I I love like um. And that can be so frosting too, just playing with like a simple fabric, but like mm-hmm. positioning it in re- like a diagonal stripe seam, like to coming together diagonally. Yeah. You're is right. Gorgeous. It can look uh, really high end. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. Oh, we just can't stop with our ideas. We can't I stop. <laughs> I can't have any more ideas. I have too much to sew. <laughs> can't stop, won't stop. <laughs> Oh, well, super fun episode, you guys. That was yeah, for yeah, sure. a great conversation. So until next time. Yes. Mm-hmm. Happy sewing. Happy, Happy stitching. Happy stitching. <laughs> I don't know where my brain is. Sew and Tell is a Sew Daily podcast and produced by Golden Peak Media. It's hosted and produced by Meg Keeley, Amanda Carestio, and me, Kate Zeinard. Daisha Clay is our producer. Director of podcasts is Jared Mayer. Tiffany Warble is Director of Content, Kelsey Ratterman handles our marketing, and Andrea Lotz does all things digital. If you'd like more information on sponsoring or advertising on Sew & Tell, go to goldenpeakmedia.com.